Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my Spring 2021 Writerly Quarterly Wrap-Up. I make these videos every three months uh, to hold myself accountable to my writing goals and see if a certain Game of Thrones character will have to come and shame me for not uh, getting through all of them. I do a couple of other things in this video series as well, which you will see um, preceded by uh, headings that will scroll down the screen. I, of course, end with setting new goals for the new quarter. So without further ado, let's get going. Excitingly, I'm starting this quarter the same way I started last quarter with a publication announcement. Just within the last few weeks, I had an essay, A World Full of Enemies, published in this collection, Fault Lines Exploring the Complicated Place of Progressive American Jewish Zionism. This collection was edited by Rabbi Menachem Creditor and Amanda Berman, who is the executive director of a nonprofit I follow, which is uh, called Zionists. It's for progressive Zionists. And uh, her organization, in fact, put the call on social media that I answered uh, to submit an essay to this collection, and everything moved super fast. <laughs> I mean, within a week of uh, submitting my essay, it was published in this book, <laughs> and I had only uh, wrote it uh, very shortly before submitting it, too. <laughs> so it's very unlike uh, most other uh, publishing and writing experiences I've had, where it takes months or years between writing something and actually seeing Seeing it in a publication. <laughs> but I am very excited about this. You know, writing essays isn't my usual. Uh, I'm usually either blogging or uh, writing fiction, but uh, this is a subject that's really close to my heart. I've talked about it in some other videos as well. Uh, I'm published alongside clergy and politicians and scholars, so that makes me rather verklempt. <laughs> uh, and there's more information about this down below. In other news, while well, I attended some online uh, writing events, uh, starting in April uh, with uh, the Maryland Writers Association Montgomery Chapters uh, open mic over Zoom, although I don't know if I should really count this as a win. Uh, at the time, I like signed in like super late and I was feeling a little under the weather, so and I wasn't sure what to expect, so I basically signed in really anonymous, like, you know, I didn't turn on my camera or anything, and it was much more intimate than I thought it would be, uh, but uh, <laughs> I basically just sat and lurked and listened, which was a lot of fun in and of itself, but uh, I should have been a little more, you know, involved too, or at least, you know, turned my camera on, so <laughs> there's that. The second two were, are more workshoppy. In fact, they are virtual workshops that were put on by the Gaithersburg Book Festival, which was held in May. Uh, I attended two workshops. Uh, one was Funky Forms and Flash Fiction, where um, the presenter, who, you know, of course, published Flash Fiction, took us on a ride uh, and uh, showed different types of uh, flash fiction stories and how they could work. I mean, it's a very innovative form, uh, you know, you can take all sorts of ideas, like even a grocery list, basically, and turn it into flash fiction with a little bit of finesse, that sort of stuff. So I think that's what she really wanted to show us. Uh, the second one is another world-building one uh, called Create a Brand New World. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've done a couple of these world-building workshops, and I feel like this one, unlike the one I talked about, you know, in my last uh, quarterly wrap-up, focused a little less on fantastical world building and a little more on thinking about etymology of, you know, place names or economics or that sort of thing. But, you know, all in all, I think it really does come down to the same thing in all these sorts of world building exercises, which is to think in detail about uh, the ways that, you know, your world would be run in terms of uh, how people dress, how people eat, what the climate would be like, and etc. And the final thing I want to touch upon in this section is uh, a write-in, a virtual write-in that I attended, which coincidentally uh, came on the same day that I got some very disappointing uh, manuscript rejection news, so womp womp. <laughs> but that being said, maybe that's uh, the best time of any to, you know, throw yourself into, you know, new writing commitments. And so I'm not actually going to say any more about this particular write-in here because it'll be coming up later in the video. 
I feel like this is my tangential section because this video is mostly about me holding myself accountable to fiction writing goals, but a lot of the writing I do in general month to month is blogging on my three blogs. So here I am picking my three top posts of the quarter. So uh, I'm going to start with my reading and writing blog uh, and move away from, you know, news of my publication and talk about uh, a post I wrote last month about uh, Jewish American Heritage Month and also Short Story Month. Uh, I've been doing this post for a few years, although actually I skipped last year, uh, where I take a defunct uh, book riot template uh, about... Uh, they highlight um, three specific books. Uh, an inbox book for books acquired, an outbox book for books finished, and an in the queue next for what you're reading next. And so I use this template to uh, highlight three collections of Jewish American short stories, uh, you know, going with the dual themes of the month of May. Uh, so uh, I find them to be a lot of fun, and it's kind of exciting to see how prevalent uh, Jewish American short story collections can be. So check out the link below. Chava's Footsteps is my blog that um, deals in pop culture and broad Jewish culture. Uh, and this month, kind of in line with uh, my book publication, I talked a bit about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, uh, particularly in conjunction with a uh, literary podcast that I listen to, fiction, nonfiction. And in one of their most recent episodes, uh, they had on two guests and talked about Israeli and Palestinian literature. And uh, I had thoughts, you know, it, it made me uh, think about things, particularly about the concept of settler colonialism, which I hadn't actually thought about in as much detail before, so I'm very appreciative to, you know, research that a little bit more. I also thought that the podcast uh, had its own biases and limitations, so, you know, I extrapolated and, you know, and was able to go into my own thoughts and highlight uh, literature and ideas uh, pertaining particularly to Israel and to the conflict and into uh, Jewish history in the region. So it was heavy stuff, but I'm pretty proud of uh, the results. On a lighter note, uh, I have my Jewish DC blog, which uh, focuses more, you know, uh, specifically on Jewish events in the DC area. And with June being Pride Month, uh, there were a few things to focus on. Uh, First of all, uh, a DC bookstore, Lost City Books, had a virtual event uh, with a debut novelist uh, who had written a uh, Jewish bisexual coming-of-age book uh, called Closer to Fine, so it was really fun to look in on that. Uh, secondly, my, my own synagogue had a Zoom event uh, with Dr. Joy Ladin, who is a uh, transgender activist and uh, professor, and uh, she talked about queering the Torah. Uh, it was really uh, interesting ideas, and I go into them in a little more detail in the blog. And finally, I pointed to other uh, local programming, like uh, a uh, Pride Shabbat that a few organizations put on, and... Uh, also, like a virtual cocktail mixer and drag bingo and games. And uh, there was a uh, community service option as well with a local LGBTQ uh, nonprofit. And uh, the Capital Jewish Museum uh, posted on Facebook some uh, artifacts from a uh, gay activist from the 80s. So that was pretty cool as well. So it was really just fun to bring all that stuff together in one post. Well, on to the important part of this video, and uh, this quarter, admittedly, my least positive part, where I talk about my recap of goals from the last quarter. Starting with goal number one, which was to contact my writers group. I meant that specifically as my old critique group. We call ourselves uh, fondly the Ladies Literary Salon. I talked about the fact that um, one of our members, Lacey, had her uh, debut novel published on June uh, 15th. I think at the time that I was uh, doing that video, uh, she hadn't set up a launch party yet, but uh, since then she had. So it was very easy to meet with at least a few members of my group at the launch party that happened last weekend, in fact, uh, where I got my copy of The Layover Signed. Ta-da! <laughs> it actually was a really incredible themed party. I put some pictures on Instagram. There were all sorts of fun tropical like decor 
And uh, one of the things I snagged for keeps was this like cocktail napkin with, you know, the layover. This kind of reminds me, I guess, of uh, the napkins uh, flight attendants, like Lacey and her main character uh, put out uh, on the plane. <laughs> But anyway, all of this is to say that I did meet with members of my writing group for the first time in over a year. It was really special. And Lacey, at least with me, brought up the idea of uh, restarting the group again in a critiquing form, probably in August. Uh, she's really busy this month with her next book. Uh, we didn't talk about it with the rest of the members at all, but she said uh, she would be emailing, you know, to see about uh, getting us started again. So I feel like this isn't actually my win, but uh, I guess if she doesn't email us by August, I can go ahead and get the ball rolling and <laughs> say I'm proactive here. My second and third goals are where things fall apart. Uh, number two being to rewrite my fantasy project chapters, and number three to be doing character profiles of Act 2 folks. I didn't even remember this was a goal this quarter, so... <laughs> Shame. 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 I earned it, Septa Unella. I totally earned that one. But I really think I can redeem myself and you might even be a little proud of me with what's coming next. <laughs> I'm not sure that you're t the type of character who gives props to her supplicants, but... Okay, I'm rounding things out here with my summer 2021 goals announcement, and as I indicated, I'm feeling pretty positive about these goals uh, for some specific reasons. Uh, I'm going to uh, harken back to the beginning of the video where I discussed an elusive write-in opportunity with my goal number one, which is to join the DC Writer Salon Finishers Group. The leader of the Capitol Hill Writers Group, which is the umbrella that my ladies' literary salon is under, she told us about it like a few years ago, and at the time I thought I didn't really need it and enough was going on without it, but, uh, but now I'm realizing, as you probably are if you've seen uh, some of my last few quarterly wrap-ups, that I am not holding myself accountable on my own. And amazingly, I live in a city where entrepreneurial people have convened very successful groups to, uh, you know, meet and write and hold themselves accountable. <laughs> uh, the DC Writer Salon is a pretty impressive group. It's amazing. This one woman, uh, a comic and an essay writer, uh, decided she wanted that accountability. So she started by inviting people to her home, but the group got big enough that in fact, she leased some property for it in DuPont Circle. And uh, they have several events every week including what they call a finishers group, which is a quarterly commitment to uh, meeting and working on one specific project. Uh, and you know, you meet weekly for the entire quarter and you have that accountability to the group. So I am very excited about this possibility because, uh, because I think this could do it. This could actually get me working on the fantasy project that is still, you know, roiling in my head. Uh, I don't think the issue is giving up the ghost here. I think it's just that push for accountability. And amazingly, there's enough people around me who have already, you know, put the gears in motion in terms of setting these things up. And uh, hopefully I can uh, join in on the ride. So related to that is goal number two, which will be my finisher's group goal, which is to rewrite fantasy chapters and tackle the dreaded Act 2A. <laughs> So that's pretty self-explanatory, or at least repetitive, from past quarters. <laughs> and finally, goal number three is, in fact, a different sort of goal. It is to draft a flash fiction project. <laughs> I feel somewhat hypocritical putting this in there because I think it was just in my last uh, quarterly wrap-up video that I said, eh, I don't know if I'll be writing flash fiction for a while, but <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> in fact, I saw a very specific call for submissions for a type of story that had to be a flash story that fit into an idea for a story that was percolating in my head. So I thought, why not combine the two? And now I have a flash fiction idea and I just need to write it out. Shouldn't take too much away from the fantasy project, right? If we're only talking about a thousand words here, <laughs> we'll see. So that about covers it for me now. I will leave links to all the things I've talked about, my blog posts, the events, and also information about the DC Writer Salon, including a promotional video that the founder made down below. 
You can catch me next on this channel in the next few days as I start out July with a uh, short story uh, tag. Uh, because as I mentioned in my last video, my mid-year uh, check-in freak-out video, uh, July is my short story month, so <laughs> huzzah. In the meantime, I hope that all of you who are starting on brand new artistic adventures the way that I am with the DC Writer Salon are gearing up for a great one. I'd love to hear about your hopes and your success stories along the way. But anyway, remember, keep writing, keep creating everyone, and I'll see you next time.